Hello, my name is Reverend Dr. May Elise Cannon. Today is Saturday, August 17th. Today is day 316. In Gaza, in the last 24 hours, it's been reported that at least 17 Palestinians were killed and dozens were wounded in an Israeli airstrike in the central Gaza Zawaida, according to reports from health officials on Saturday. The Israeli army today ordered residents of some of the northeast Gaza neighborhoods to evacuate and to head for known shelters in the center of Gaza City, warning that it would act forcefully against Hamas and other groups that were firing rockets from there. The Palestinian Health Ministry said in a statement yesterday that it detected the first confirmed case of polio in the Gaza Strip in the central city of Deir Abala, a 10-month-old baby who had not yet received any polio vaccination dose. I know that early next week, some of the humanitarian agencies we're working with will be coming out with a polio um, update in terms of that humanitarian crisis. The UN chief Antonio Guterres yesterday called for a concrete assurance guaranteeing humanitarian pauses in order for a polio vaccine campaign to take effect in Gaza. The Telegraph reported that Hamas officials in 2022 wrote a plan to disinter British soldiers' remains in Gaza and to use them to extort the British government. According to documents from Gaza provided by Israeli officials, Israeli officials believe the document was written in reaction to then Prime Minister Liz Truss saying she wanted to move the British embassy in Israel from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. According to the health ministry in Gaza, the death toll there is 40,074 Palestinians killed and at least 92,537 wounded since October 7th. In terms of escalations and hostilities between Israel and Lebanon, the Lebanese health ministry has reported that 10 people, including a mother and two sons, have been killed and several more wounded in an Israeli airstrike in the South Lebanon Nabatia area. The Israeli army said that its Air Force fighter jets struck a Hezbollah weapons storage facility and that it also hit additional targets in South Lebanon. You'll recall we've been talking about there's been at least 100,000 people displaced from South Lebanon over the past several months. Um, and on the north border of Israel, there's at least 60,000 people displaced. The Israeli army said that it killed Hassin Ibrahim Kaseb, a commander in Hezbollah's elite Radwan force, in a strike in the Lebanese city of Tyr. And the IDF has said that two soldiers were severely and lightly wounded near the Lebanese border on Saturday. It's unclear if they were wounded by anti-tank missiles or a drone. Firefighter fighting... Fighter crews are battling flames in over 10 sites in North Israel after a heavy barrage of more than 55 rockets have been launched from Lebanon. The crews, with the help of local security squads, reportedly gained control over most of the fires. Lebanese news outlet Al Akbar reported that the country's national electricity supply was shut off due to fuel shortages and that Lebanon's water authority asked citizens to limit their use of water to conserve electricity that is used by water pumps. Lebanese outlets Al Akbar and Al Mayadeen reported that Israel struck the South Lebanese towns of Aitai, Ash Shab, and Atarun on Saturday. I'll just remind you that these hostilities between Hezbollah and Israel are not the reported retaliation that's been waited upon. Uh, it's been said that um, that retaliation would wait to see the outcome of hostage ceasefire negotiation talks that were in Doha Thursday uh, and Friday and will continue into next week. Um, Alan Pincus, um, a commentator in Israel, said that three times since October 7th, the U.S. has sent major forces to the Middle East to help Israel against Iran and its proxies on top of massive military aid. It's a paradox of relations. Under Netanyahu, the stronger Israel feels, the more it's reliant on America. And in terms of the relationship between Israel and Iran, the New York Times reported that Israeli, American, and Iranian officials said yesterday that Iran is expected to delay attacks on Israel in retaliation for the assassination of Hamas chief Ismail Hananiyeh in Tehran in order to allow mediators more time to make a high-stakes push for a ceasefire to end the war in Gaza. In terms of hostage ceasefire negotiations, a senior Biden administration official said yesterday that the leaders of mediating countries agreed to negotiations between Israel and Hamas for a hostage ceasefire deal and are now in the end game. 
Senior Hamas official Ghazi Hamad said no major issue was agreed upon in the latest round of talks and blamed Israel for sabotaging negotiations. Hamad said Netanyahu is trying to present a new outline using the U.S. in an attempt to gain time. U.S. President Joe Biden said talks are serious and constructive and added that senior officials from our governments will reconvene in Cairo before the end of next week with the aim to conclude the deal under the terms put forward today. In the West Bank, IDF reservists stood by as Jewish settlers attacked residents and set fire to buildings in the West Bank town of Jeet on Thursday, according to a preliminary probe by Israel. A defense official said that soldiers didn't do anything to stop the pogrom, despite witnessing the acts. A 23-year-old Palestinian was killed and none of the rioters were arrested. Six Israelis, some wearing masks, tried to enter the West Bank village of Rajib, south of Nablus, and escaped after Israeli security forces arrived, according to a defense official. I wanted to specifically acknowledge the U.S. government Office of Palestinian Affairs. Yesterday, I talked about an incident that happened in a Palestinian village of Om Jamal in the South Hebron Hills. A group of Bedouins there had been attacked numerous times over the past couple of weeks by settlers, and we had called on the Office of Palestinian Affairs to intervene. And today I heard from a solidarity group that has American citizens, some of our CMAP constituents, regional coordinators, traveling that the village has been safe overnight and that the Israelis sent soldiers nearby to prevent the settlers from attacking. We know that the U.S. government intervened, and so we're grateful um, in that regard. The Bedouin community will um, move out of that location because they've been completely surrounded by settlers. In Israel, demonstrators rallied outside of the home of public officials across the country today, protesting against the government, calling for a hostage deal. Protests called for a ceasefire hostage release deal and demonstrations against Israel's ruling coalition are set to take place um, Saturday night this evening. In Argentina, federal police dismantled what it said was a terrorist cell planning attacks on the Jewish community in the city of Mendoza, according to the National Security Ministry in a statement yesterday describing the group as an Islamist terrorist organization. And finally, I wanted to close with some words from Trua. Um, That's a Jewish nonprofit um, in the United States. Their executive director, Rabbi Jill Jacobs, sent out a note to their constituents a few days ago that I thought was a message that could be an encouragement to all of us. Um, She wrote this, she said it was the Shabbat after Tisha B'Av, Shabbat Nachamu, the Shabbat of comfort. After the opening words of this week's Haftarah, comfort, oh comfort my people, says our God. That's from Isaiah 41. We all desperately need consolation and comfort and hope right now as we pass the painful milestone of 300 days since October 7th and face the looming threat of a wider regional war. She said a lot of other words, but then she spoke about the voices of families in Gaza. She said they did not choose this war, they're mourning loved ones, and they're desperately seeking shelter and food and medicine. It's past time to end this war that has already killed thousands of Israelis and tens of thousands of Palestinians, displaced tens of thousands of Israelis and close to two million Palestinians. It's created a humanitarian crisis in Gaza, placed incredible stress on Israel's international relationship, and it threatens to spark a regional war with potentially devastating consequences for both Israelis and its neighbors. It's past time to sign a deal to end the war and to bring home hostages. We urge the Israeli delegation to make every effort to close the deal. If you want to support this effort, there are two things you can do now. Now, remember, this is Trua, a Jewish American um, nonprofit uh, calling on you know their constituents. Uh, and these are the two things that they encourage people to do, to watch and share a video. It's a video called We Are All Hostages. This group of hostage families has been bo- vocal about the ways that Netanyahu has been obstructing the deal, and they've appealed directly to American Jews for help. And the second thing they encourage people to do, Jews specifically, to reach out to Jewish organizations that you're a part of that have joined calls to bring hostages home and ask them to publicly urge Netanyahu to reach a deal to end the war, which goes hand in hand with freeing the hostages. Consolation and hope do not come only from the outside. After the destruction of the temple and the conquest of Jerusalem, the Jewish people had to rebuild their lives, their communities, and the modes of Jewish practice. Their examples inspire us to commit 
to hope by describing the world we want to see and by taking action together. And so we stand with the Jewish community and calling and working towards the return of hostages to their families, also in the release of Palestinian prisoners who are being held unjustly, in calling for immediate and adequate humanitarian assistance into Gaza. You know, we're supporting a permanent and lasting and comprehensive ceasefire, addressing the core causes of the conflict, and also calling for the withholding of arms until it can be proven that they're used according to international law. So all of these things, we hope that the efforts for a hostage uh, negotiation deal in the days ahead will be successful, and we will continue to work to that end with prayers for comfort and consolation for all who are suffering uh, in the name of God. Amen.